The deep sea has, for almost all of human history, been almost entirely impossible to encounter. Pressure high enough to shatter an iron ball, combined with overwhelming darkness, made it impassable at best, and a lack of valuable resources certainly didn't help incentivize explorers. And so, it remained hidden for millennia. But recently, these barriers have been broken, with new technology all across the world allowing humans to explore deeper than they ever were supposed to. And the things they found there were incredibly alien and impossibly exotic. The Magnapena Squid First found off the coast of Brazil, these creatures were immediately recognizable for one thing. Length. Clocking in at 28 feet or 8 meters maximum, these creatures were enormous, however frail their tendrils were. They were unlike anything ever seen before, and vastly different from any other squids, leading to confusion amongst the scientific community. Some believed that they fed by dragging their limbs across the oceanic floor, catching crustaceans and whatever else, while others thought their tentacles were used to filter out and consume zooplankton. Even still, there were too few sightings and the pressure was too high to get anything more than that. Decades later, after its first sighting in 1988, very little additional info has been discovered. The elbow-like tentacle structure clearly visible on the squid still baffles many biologists, and the only thing they can agree on, other than length, is the fact it uses its fins to maneuver itself through the ocean. But even details on that are thin. Based on the little info we do have, it can be assumed, however, that these are only juveniles, leading to the question of what immeasurable creature, if it exists at all, does this animal grow into? Still, these entities have been found nearly everywhere in the Atlantic, from Mexico to Ghana, and are a definite cornerstone in exotic life. The Indo-Pacific region of our world is no stranger to treacherous underwater creatures, one of the most notable being the bottle worm. While initially harmlessly poking its head out of the sand, this creature holds many secrets behind the muddy veil it nests in, one of the most notable being its incredible length. Spanning from 1 to 3 meters, or 3 to 10 feet, the baba worm is long and strong enough to tunnel through massive areas of land, it making burrows and holes for it to hide in, and having little predators due to their tough scales, difficult habitat, and lack of nutritional value. Perhaps more notable, however, is its feeding habits. The five mandibles on its face are used to detect anything from small fish, crustaceans, and anything else around it. Once something wanders a bit too close, the baba worm attacks, using mandibles and raw strength to drag whatever it sees down to the depths below. This, combined with their speed, which is oftentimes faster than fish can see, makes them nearly unstoppable, especially in unmonitored aquariums, where they have become iconic for burying themselves in containers and lashing out to kill the fish of their owners, one after another. But even with the Bobbit Worm's incredible strength, size, and speed, the Bobbit Worm is an essential part to underwater wildlife, keeping the small fish population in check and even being incapable of harming anything larger. Thus, the Bobbit Worm remains alive and well beneath the sand, where it will stay for centuries to come. The question of what is the most unusual animal on Earth has been proposed for generations. Popular candidates include things like the platypus, moles, and any number of insects. But I believe the answer doesn't lie anywhere near the surface. I believe it's deep, deep under the sea, and rests within the animal, the siphonophore, for one simple reason. It isn't just one animal. The siphonophore, like other creatures, is made up of cells. However, these cells make up individual zooids, or small, colonial animals, which connect and serve different purposes across the creature. Some help capture and digest plankton, which they eat, while others help respirate. But either way, they're all fulfilling a specific function within the siphonophore. Because of this, siphonophore can be structured in numerous, nonsensical looking ways, whether a 30 foot long string of zooids, or a cluster of tentacles and veins. While harmless to humans, they can certainly frighten us, and while there are many fitting candidates, I believe the inevitable answer to my opening question is the siphonophore. It is the strangest animal. 
Aquatic creatures are debatably the most survivable, non-bacterial creatures on Earth, with small fish, crustaceans, and more sprouting up in even the most desolate and exotic of places across the seafloor. The diversity between these creatures is so vast that even creatures that may seem identical in nature and properties are incredibly distinguished from each other. Take the anguilla eel compared to the saltwater moray, for example. Of course, with both parties consisting of eels, physiological similarities are immediately obvious, but still, there is more than meets the eye. Whilst the moray has poor eyesight and navigational skills, the anguilla eel is incredibly experienced in both sight and direction, using these tools to get through rivers and even have scales, a unique trait in comparison to any other eel. And even then, the anguilla has teeth specially designed for small fish, fauna, and whatever else it can consume. And all of these differences, every single trait that makes the anguilla different from its moray counterpart, come from one singular environmental change. Morays reside entirely in salt water, whilst the anguilla is in smaller bodies of fresh. All of this proves that even the smallest of tinkering, the most minuscule possible changes you can make lead to massive differences. And while the anguilla's specializations may not seem immediately obvious or effective, the change it's had on its life in shallow lakes or rivers is clear. While there is no definitive superior eel, anguillas and morays have their own benefits and own perks that makes them survivable in their own habitats. And that's what's most important, really. Ocean life will survive, even thrive, if given the chance to change. Few creatures are as closely tied to humankind as the beluga whale. Residing in almost all of the Arctic Ocean and the waters around it, the beluga whale is a cetacean identifiable for its massive forehead, which houses the melon, an echolocation organ, as well as its characteristically charismatic appearance, as if it's always smiling. The beluga, due to its habitat in the Arctic, has previously been hunted by Anuit peoples of Alaska and Greenland, as well as polar bears and killer whales. Because of this, the beluga has deep cultural ties to many northern regions of the world, and is a common food item up there. The beluga, with so many intimidating predators, has many defense mechanisms to prevent it from being eaten on the regular, with its primary being its most iconic feature, echolocation. Rare in most animals, this trait allows the beluga to sense its surroundings through vibrations, and evade would-be attackers with relative ease. The ability is difficult to maintain, though, and requires almost its entire forehead and space to function. Thus, the beluga has a massive and very obviously extended forehead, which stores the melon, an item, as previously mentioned, used for echolocation. Even with this, though, they're still often hunted by predators, mostly humans in whaling exercises, and pollution and overfishing have massively affected the beluga population over time. But relations with humans and even themselves aren't all bad, though, as recent measures have been taken to drastically reduce the hunting of belugas, and they are actively rising in population. Belugas are also some of the most sociable aquatic creatures, as they travel in pods or small groups, and often participate in activities and play with each other, with this activity being observed by humans and one of the primary purposes of their capture. The beluga is commonly used for entertainment in water-related parks and locations because of this aforementioned social prowess, playfulness, and lack of anxiety around humans, leading to popularization in cultures around the world. The beluga is one of the most well-known and respected ocean creatures, and with its many incredible attributes, how could it not be? The deep sea is known for its isolation from the rest of the world. With the strong pressure and lack of valuable food, few creatures even attempt to venture below the shallow waters. But because of this, the few creatures who do go down get to enjoy every single bit of food, carcass, and whatever vegetation grows so far down, with the only trade-off being that, with less food and light, the creatures must evolve in an incredibly unusual and often simple way. The hagfish, a marine animal found in deeper waters all around the world, gladly took this trade-off and today is known for its hilariously basic physiology and an unusual defense mechanism. Yes, the hagfish has a single, undeveloped eye, hardly any sense of sound, a very simple nervous system, and its small mouth capable of eating only minuscule bits of meat and bacteria. To make up for this, the hagfish's diet is vast, and aside from eating any dead animal that sinks too far under the sea, it will also consume almost anything small enough to fit inside of its mouth. When hagfish feasts on a large, dead animal it can take months to consume but this is shortened if others of its species also find it and swarm the carcass. Hundreds of them can tear it apart in days. 
They're effectively the flies of the deep sea, venturing around and eating whatever is available, eating what they deem as containing food, and stripping bones bare. How does a creature such as this survive with no spine, limited mobility, and weak ability to detect its predators at all? For the hagfish, the answer is simple. A viscous white slime that it ejects when threatened. Aside from it being unexpected by predators, it serves the secondary purpose of clogging the gills of marine opponents, making them stay as far from the hagfish as possible. Because of this, their largest predators are aquatic mammals that venture too deep down. The hagfish got what it wanted in evolving to be so deep and isolated, but with all the trade-offs it makes, is it really even worth it? The tunicate family, while unique on its own, is notable in the fact that even its individual species are incredibly varied. Take the pyrosome, a member of the tunicate family and filter feeder found in the Pacific. The pyrosome is a hollow, tube-shaped creature which pulls in water from the outside into its internal cells, which filter out most of the water and leave valuable and edible bacteria for it to use. The pyrosome itself, meanwhile, is planktonic, meaning it floats through the ocean without any motivation or control of itself relying on currents and other outside forces. One of the distinguishing features of the pyrosome, aside from its youth not being attached to a solid object, a hallmark of tunicates, is its heavy variation in size. Depending on how many colonial zooids band together to form the pyrosome, they can range from microscopic to the size of a human person. While not valuable for predators because of the little material they need and use to stay alive, the pyrosome is one of the oddest creatures out there, and that's saying something when it's up against even its own family, and still becomes the strangest. The Mantis Shrimp One of the strongest aquatic creatures, iconic for its incredible vision, sound-breaking fists, and the fact it remains as a menace amongst both fish and aquarium owners alike. But how did this happen? Why is a multicolored shrimp so powerful and so common in the oceans of the world? The mantis shrimp itself is an oddity amongst crustaceans, having unique hunting strategies where it hunts down and kills its prey, despite being primarily a burrowing animal, as well as having a unique structured shell. But that's not all. The mantis shrimp, you see, is capable of seeing a wider variety of colors than virtually anything else in the world. Having more light and color receptors than essentially anything else means they topple almost any foe in the vision department. The unique thing is that they don't even use this extra perception for all that much. It's almost solely for ease and quick combat, allowing the eyes to fully process info with little interaction from the brain, leading to less energy usage overall. And you can't talk about the mantis shrimp without mentioning its most iconic trait. In some species of mantis shrimp, it is, in fact, possible for it to punch so violently and so quickly that it can create one of the loudest sounds possible in nature, and it has even been able to kill opponents via vibration alone. The mantis shrimp even has documented cases of shattering glass in aquariums or personal tanks. The mantis shrimp, even moving past this, isn't desirable for aquariums because it not only damages rocks in the terrain around the aquarium, but it is also prone to attacking and murdering other fish in the tank. The mantis shrimp, like its eyes, is incredibly powerful despite its compact size and maintains dominance over the shallow ocean for a reason. The blobfish is one of the most infamous underwater animals in recent memory. Having received a variety of awards for its unappealing appearance, the blobfish is undoubtedly an icon of the deep ocean. Its exotic pink color, lopsided and bloated facial features, and general uncanny shape giving it its reputation today. But the blobfish isn't nearly as unattractive as people typically consider it. The blobfish, you see, lives in the very, very bottom of the ocean, around Tasmania and New Zealand, and as such, the sheer pressure of the water around it maintains its shape and appearance without any actual bones or muscle mass. The blobfish itself is almost entirely normal in shape and cosmetics before being taken out of the ocean. And that is when it begins to bloat, lose its shape, and become what it's known for today. The blobfish is a tragic demonstration of what misinformation can do to an animal, and while normally a simple filter feeder, it has been massively blown out of proportion for its state after being abused beyond belief. While there is little else to say about the blobfish, the creature does not deserve its reputation today, and hopefully it will be properly accounted for sometime in the future. Before I close out this video, I'd like to thank all of you for the support so far. 
It's been less than a year since I started making content on YouTube, and yet I've already grown and learned so much. Thank you all for the support, and I'll continue making videos in the future. Without further ado, this is the end. One wouldn't initially assume there'd be many controversial creatures in marine life. No doubt, every single organism under the sea plays some sort of positive role for the ecosystem, and the ones that don't are looked down upon as such. The oyster, and its many varieties, ends up being, depending on where you are, either a welcome filter feeder or an omen of bad times. Regardless of location, though, it's agreed almost universally that the oyster is a popular food. While the oyster itself is a stationary filter feeder and doesn't move much, crabs, other crustaceans, and even mollusks have used oysters for food for almost as long as they've been around. An oyster has been a popular item of consumption even on land as a delicacy among many sets of humans. Oysters aren't only foods, though, as their hard shells and massive habitats made up of hundreds or even thousands of oysters along different rocks or shorelines provide habitats for a variety of animals, making them a keystone species. With all this, though, how are they so negative? Surely such beneficial creatures can't be all that bad. The answer lies within a place one wouldn't initially expect. Their taste. The popularity of oysters and shipping of them from one area to another ended up slowly spreading oysters to places they shouldn't be. Negligence in their care and colonies on boats and ships led to their spread all over the world. And with how plentiful they become and in such little time too, the populations often get so massive that they're impossible to deal with, draining entire habitats of any life other than themselves. The oyster is an efficient creature, and while they can rather easily be dealt with by natives of their own habitats, those they invade are less experienced. While efforts to stop this spread have been started, most have been ineffectual, and, in the end, the oyster is one of the biggest pains for marine life wherever it invades. The oyster is a conflicting creature. While useful under the right circumstances, in the wrong habitat it can be deadly, and it has caused pleasure and pain for creatures in water and on land for millennia.